the disgusting truth about personal hygiene for a Roman emperor. Public Roman baths, flushing toilets, exfoliating cleansers, and other public facilities were all part of ancient Rome's commitment to hygiene. But putting away the public, how was the hygiene for emperors? Were they as clean as they were described in books? Today, we have gathered some disgusting truths about Roman emperors that you may not have heard before. Number one, a sickle to remove sweat. Romans of all social classes bathed in remarkably similar ways. A strigil, which is effectively a miniature sickle, was used to remove sweat and oil by everyone, from emperors to commoners. The Romans covered themselves in oil after every workout and bath. A strigil was then used to scrape the substance into a guttus. The procedure was carried out without the use of soap, and it was then followed by a rinse in cold water. The wealthy had their slaves do the scraping for them, but the poor had to do it themselves. When used excessively, the strigil can cause harm, although the rinse that followed, a good strigil scrape was supposed to help the skin regain its moisture, it made the skin red and itchy instead. Strigils were also fairly sharp. Suetonius suggested that Emperor Augustus's many callous areas resembling ringworm were induced by a continual itching of his body and a rigorous application of the strigil. 2. Both emperors and common people use the public baths. In Roman culture, taking a dip in a public pool was a social activity that was popular among the lower classes. It was common for wealthy Romans to have their private baths, but as the Roman Empire spread, public bathhouses were constructed in both large and small Roman cities. Emperor Hadrian was a frequent visitor to public baths, a fact that was well received by other customers. He frequently bathed in the public baths, even when the rudest crowd was there. On one occasion, he witnessed a veteran, whom he had known while he was in the service, rubbing his back and the rest of his body against the wall. He asked the man why he had the marble rub him, and when the man replied that it was because he did not own a slave, he gave the man some slaves and the cost of their maintenance. In addition, he gave the man some money to pay for the slave's upkeep. 3. Emperors Valued Urine Although Romans did not have soap in the same sense as we do now, they did discover various methods to clean their clothes. Urine was considered to be one of the most precious resources for the washing industry. It was common practice for the Romans to use urine, both human and animal, because of the high ammonia content. Traders would obtain this urine by searching around public restrooms. Nero, the Roman emperor in the first century AD, is credited with instituting a levy that came to be known as the Vectigal Urinae, which translates from Latin as the urine tax. The poorer classes of society were forced to relieve themselves into little pots, which were then thrown into cesspools, which led to this charge being placed on the collection of urine at public urinals. In addition to this, urine was collected from the higher classes' use of public restrooms. Pee was collected from cesspools, the tax was paid by the buyer of the urine, and the urine was then recycled as a valuable raw material for several different chemical processes once it had been sold. They used it as a cleaning agent when they washed their garments, brushed their teeth, and tanned leather. They also used it to wash their clothes. In the end, there was such a large volume of pee that was utilized and collected that the Roman emperor had to impose a tax on it. The imposition of this tax by the Roman emperors Nero and Vespasian in the first century AD is credited with the invention of the famous saying, pecunia non olet, which translates to money does not stink. The ancient Romans used urine as a mouthwash and combined it with pumice to make toothpaste. They did this because they believed that using urine would make their teeth brighter and protect them from tooth decay. Pee was considered to be so powerful that manufacturers of toothpaste and mouthwash continued to use it well into the 1700s. 4. Romans drank gladiator blood as an epilepsy cure. According to historical records, religious and medical authors believed that epilepsy might be treated by consuming either the blood or the livers of gladiators between the 1st and the 6th centuries. Gladiators were typically classified as armed combatants who were placed in an arena to battle against other gladiators or wild animals. When gladiator contests were held in ancient Rome, 
It was common practice to cut the gladiator's throat first and then sell the still warm blood of the victorious gladiator to the spectators present in the arena. It was believed that this blood could purify the spirit, but as time went on, it started to be employed more explicitly as a treatment for various diseases, including epilepsy. There's evidence in the form of facts and transcripts that suggest that Julius Caesar may have exhibited symptoms of epilepsy and that he may have consumed gladiator blood at some point. Not only the blood, but also the sweat of the gladiators was a benefit for high-status ladies. It was believed that ladies could turn back the hands of time and regain their energy by using facial lotions and soaps made from the winner's sweats and scrapings of their skin. These products were bottled and sold to women at high prices. 5. One sponge for everyone. The ancient Romans had a method for cleaning their buttocks that was extremely revolting. The implement, which was made of a wooden pole with a sponge attached at one end, was referred to as a xylospongium. People shared these sponge sticks, but they were rarely cleaned in between uses because they were attached to the benches in the restroom. Slaves may have washed these sponges once or twice a month in a bucket of vinegar, and it appears that these sponges may have been used more like toilet brushes than toilet paper. And because there were so few of them in public restrooms, people had to share the sponge to make do with what was available. In the case of emperors, those who used the same restroom would always wash up with the same brush until it was cleaned. Because of this, Roman toilets became ideal environments for the growth of germs. It is therefore not surprising that infectious diseases such as cholera and typhoid were widespread in ancient Rome. 6. Medicinal Treatment of Emperors The Romans did not have anything comparable to bandages to use for treating wounds. According to Pliny the Elder, the people who lived in Rome used goat feces to treat wounds and bites from animals. In addition, Goat dung was consumed either for its stimulating effects or as a medicine to combat the effects of disease on the body. Either goat feces were boiled in vinegar or crushed into a powder and added to other beverages. Sometimes both methods were used. This beverage was consumed by everyone in Roman society from the lowest class citizen to Emperor Nero himself. Pliny also discussed the use of feces from mice, weasels, and pigeons for cauterization. 7. The Infamous Vomitorium The vomitorium is recognized as the room where the wealthiest of the ancient Romans would go to empty themselves of food and clear space in their bellies so that they may continue to indulge themselves during feasts. It has evolved into what is known as a symbol of the riches and luxury of ancient Rome in modern times. Although it is true that ancient Romans engaged in the gluttonous act of relieving their guts by forcing themselves to throw up, this activity did not take place in a specific room designated for the purpose. In Roman amphitheaters and stadiums, there existed a corridor known as the vomitorium that served as both an entrance and departure for the stadium or amphitheater's vast crowds. According to the findings of several archaeologists and historians, the typical wealthy noble of ancient Rome would frequently finish the majority of his meals feeling overly full from the consumption of food and wine. After this, he would lay down and have his servants insert a feather down his throat, which would cause him to regurgitate the contents of his stomach, thereby making room for more food. Greed and gluttony were fundamental aspects of ancient Roman culture and exemplified the Romans' complete devotion to pleasure as well as their willingness to give in to their whims and wishes. Though the Romans were greatly admired for their cleanliness, these disgusting habits may change your views about them. This ends the video for today. What are your thoughts on this? Tell us in the comments. Also, like, share, and subscribe to the channel to learn more historical facts. See you next time!